Welcome to the second in the Crawford Technology series of recordings about advanced functional presentation, its history, its structure and its use. The first session looked at the history of AFP and its transition to an open standard. In this recording, I will guide you through the standards and provide the foundation for you to understand the overall structure of an AFP file and how to find the specific values you are looking for. You will be able to work out why the output has printed the way it has. In the first recording, I described an AFP file as a series of objects with a hierarchy to provide a structure and meaning to them all. In the words of the standard, an AFP file is a data stream, which is a continuous order stream of data elements and objects conforming to a given format. So what is this format? The base definition is described in the Mixed Object Document Content Architecture Standard, MODCA, and this describes a series of self-describing structures. The structured field introducer comprises eight bytes. The length of the field, including not including is the first byte, and as you can see, it is capped at 32,767 bytes. It's a two-byte integer. We then have the record type ID, and these three bytes are known as the AFP triplet. We have a set of flags and a, and a set of results. The flags are important because they help to determine how to interpret the data fields, and importantly, define a segmentation approach that enables large data packets, images for example, to be split across multiple structured fields. These records do not prescribe a structure for a file. The AFP standard brings together various, even back then there were legacy, file formats. The fields could be split over one or more records depending upon the file storage formats in use. Remember, many of these fields and structures were defined in mainframe only processing days, with fixed length records and storage at a premium both in memory and on the disk. The current XML, JSON, variable length fields and structures just hadn't been invented. The SF type ID also has a structure. It's broken down into types and categories, which enable rapid understanding and rapid processing of the files. So we'll look at a couple of examples. D3A8A8 stands for begin document, where type A8 is begin, and document happens to be A8 as well. So begin page is D3A8AF, and end document is D3A9A8. If you look at enough AFP files, you'll soon become very familiar with these patterns. D3A090 is formally defined as a process element attribute. It is the tagged log logical element, the TLE, where metadata is frequently stored. Not all combinations of elements are available in all situations. There is a hierarchy. For example, it makes no sense for a print file to be contained within a document, but a page group and individual pages are perfectly valid, perfectly valid children of a document or of a page group. This hierarchy is especially important when it comes to resources, as presentation attributes are inherited and overridden as the content hierarchy is traversed. So here we have a page with an active environment group that defines three coded fonts, within two map coded font structures, and as expected, the Arial, Courier, and Times New Roman text is displayed. Elsewhere on the page, there is a graphic object. This defines font ID 3 to be Wingdings. So the text within this graphic object is displayed as Arial, Courier, and Wingdings. We see this technique on a daily basis on the internet in cascading style sheets that were first invented in 1994. I don't propose to go through all 722 pages of the Modka document, but if you've been confused when using an AFP viewer or a hex editor to view file files to try and understand why characters are being printed, hopefully this has provided you with a good place to start. I'll now take a quick look at three of the more common standards that supplement Modka and cover details around fonts, text and colour management. The font reference architecture contains all things font. You'll recall from the first recording the mapping of a typed character, the printed character, and the flexibility and complexity that even such a simple task has when it's thought through in great detail. The document also covers how IBM fonts are detailed and presented with character reference axes, character boxes, and intra-character, that's within character spacing. However, it also documents how other more modern functional technologies such as TrueType or OpenType can be used within AFP files. 
Remember, this, arc, this standard is all about activating dots of ink on paper or pixels on a screen to create a pattern that is understandable by us as a letter. There are 35 pages of double column glossary covering terms such as raster and outline fonts and other highly technical character spacing techniques. In practice, all of this is taken care of automatically by the document composition and printer applications. If you, if you do need to look at a file for a particular reason, there are, then there are two important points to remember. Raster fonts are dots on paper or screens. If you change the resolution, you acquire a different set of dots. Otherwise, the device will make an approximation that most of the time will be acceptable, but it won't always be acceptable. Secondly, when rendering documents, the font metadata, that's Arial, Helvetica, Bold, Italic, is just information. And although you should expect it to be correct, it actually bears no relation to what is printed on the paper. This metadata is more important when trying to extract information to, from the file for indexing purposes. The presentation architecture is about the placement of these characters, the graphical objects that represent the characters on the page. And even this fairly simple task is more, more complex than it might seem. A character is positioned on the page using an XY coordinate system with its origin in the top left hand corner of the page. However, not all languages are read from left to right or from top to bottom. So the character is actually positioned against a certain set of axes that is used to describe the reading order. And here we have a right to left printing order, that's given by the positive I direction, from text that was received in the correct order. The text is positioned against these I and B axis and then mapped to the page axis for physical printing. This text standard is also a guide to the history of the AFP, with four separate substandards that have been defined as printer capabilities have increased over the years from typewriter style printers to high resolution, full color, dot addressable print systems. Fundamentally, this standard is all about positioning and or orientating characters on a page. Remember, the actual scribing of the characters is covered within the font standard. Color man management is obviously all about color management and conversion. Not all colors are created equally, and ultimately color management is a very mathematical and scientific area to do with the reflection of light off of different surfaces and how the eye perceives the output and the translations between the various different color definition systems. As you are probably aware, computer monitors use an additive space, red, green, blue, added together on a dark background so that full values red, green and blue make white. A printing device where the paper is white, or at least generally white, uses a subtractive system, cyan, magenta, yellow, where the colours are subtracted to create black. In practice, all printers include a fourth colour, black the K channel to save on ink, and we come up with the traditional CMYK. Note how the colors created through these two systems don't overlap and are different at various points. Many printers, manufacturers, include the capability to support extra color inks to help reduce the breadth and depth of color required to an acceptable cost. These are known as spot colors. This color standard covers in immense detail AFP supports for translating colors between these normative color spaces, and, and as you've seen in the final diagram, these colors are not always easy to replicate. You may need to look at these color elements to see it within the AFP file to see how it has actually been put together. It's very easy for an image design to be displayed on the internet using RGB to be included within a print file but it won't be printed to the same colors that the marketing representative was wondering. You may need to find out why. For complete list, I'll list the other standards that are published on the AFP Consortium website. The barcode standard describes the presentation of a barcode, be it a one-dimensional or a two-dimensional barcode, from the supplied data. This creates the image that you see on the paper or on the screen. The graphic standard is about issuing commands to draw lines and shapes. It's not about presenting photographic images because that's covered in the image standard where the positioning, transparency and overlay of images is defined. Various image compression techniques are supported, a device independent way of laying out and processing the images. There's also a standard about metadata. 
the Mocker standard, which describes the sorts of metadata that can and should be included within the file. And that completes the set of Ockers. There are two other documents that are published. The first is the IPDS standard, and this is the printer standard for translating the Mocker data stream of data into the printer control characters that are actually used to control the printers and provide the bidirectional feedback that we talked about last time. The presentation object subsets for AFP is really just an appendix that lists the uh, external standards such as scalar ve vector graphics and how they are supported within AFP. So thank you for your time and I hope you've enjoyed this tour of through the AFP stand AFP standards. If you would like us to visit some of, the, some of these standards in more detail or cover some of the standards we haven't, then please contact us and we'll be more than happy to put together an additional recording. Next time I'll be putting these pieces together and talking you through the anatomy of an AFP to PDF conversion. This we find is the most common transform as legacy archives are made available to business users or on internal networks or made available on demand to customers through archive portals. So once again, thank you very much for your time and we look forward to seeing you again soon.